Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at FlexLogix with Chen Wang, who's going to talk today about the Winograd transformation. Chen, what is the Winograd transformation? Great. The Winograd transformation, you may or may not know, did not originate in convolutional neural networks. It actually started in the 1980s. It started with a lot of filter operations. Uh, you can view it as a stream of audio, streaming through an audio filter. And um, the person at Winograd had realized that there is a lot of spatial locality in the data processing, spatial or temporal, based on how you view the signal coming in. But basically, you can slice a window through the picture or through the audio, and there is a lot of repetitive information from one step of the window to the next. And people have then, in more recent years, started applying the same techniques onto convolutional neural networks because it is, in essence, a similar operation of sliding a certain filter window of a certain size, let's say, for example, three by three, across a certain picture. What have you drawn out here? Yeah, so what I've drawn out here is basically the top left corner of a picture, for example, that we're about to do a three by three convolution operations on. Um, and you will see that Winograd only works on a filter sizes of greater than one by one because it has to have some spatial uh, locality between one uh, step of the filter and the next. For a one by one filter, there's no overlap between one, one step and the next. But for three by three, for example, uh, you will see there's a substantial amount of overlap on, on the, the data. So I can walk you through here. So we're starting with the top left uh, uh, picture to be filtered on, which is a 3x3 three three, uh, set of data that will be convolved with a 3x3 three three set of weights to produce a single 1x1 one one pixel. It can be of a certain depth. Okay? So we are looking at a 3x3 three three data by a 3x3 three three weight for a 1x1 one one output. And that is actually applied um, across the picture, the rows, as well as across the columns. So uh, we can take the first uh, four steps here and draw them out like this. And what you're trying to do here is pretty much what you do with pruning, right? You're trying to make this a much more efficient operation so that you can uh, do things faster, uh, speed things up, and get rid of any um, overlap. We're certainly trying to speed things up, but pruning uh, generally requires you to modify the model. We train the model in order to make it simpler. In this case, we are doing a mathematically equivalent representation just with fewer operands, um, fewer multiplication operands, which, which tend to be the most expensive portion. And we'll see how we can actually uh, go about doing that. So we can take the first four steps of this filter on the top 4x4 four four box. Uh, so you can see that these filters actually have a substantial amount of data overlap. There are the four corners which have no overlap, they only belong to the box of one color. And then on the other extreme, there are the four boxes in the center, which is shared by all four colors of the boxes. So the Winograd transformation actually says, well, instead of doing a three by three convolution four times for these four pixels, why don't you transform the input data through some simple additions and subtractions and create it into a tilde V. Say, and we will operate it on the entire 4x4 four four window of the picture. And then we also transform these weights with some additional uh, additions and subtractions um, from a 3x3 three three weight to a 4x4 four four tilde W, for example. And then the output of this convolution will be a 4x4 four four tilde output that is then, through some subtractions and additions, transformed back into a single 2x2 two two output. So. Does this reduce the amount of data that you have to send out afterwards? One of the problems with uh, convolutional neural networks is typically they're used for things like computer vision or in a car, right? And you have so much data coming in because it's basically just streaming video. Now what you really want to do is be able to narrow that down, pre-process some of the stuff, and send along what you need to. Yeah, so basically a lot of this will require some pre-processing, but the amount of pre-processing that is required is far, far, far less than the amount of multiplication that we're saving. And especially um, in a processor, 
example, for example, where a lot of these intermediate data have to be stored and written out, this is a far more efficient implementation because instead of, of doing 4 times 9, which is 36 set of multiplications, we're only doing 16. And, and the multiplications are the bottleneck in most of uh, the processor-based uh, computations. So how much extra work does this take in order to be able to do this? Um, it depends. Um, in a native, in an ASIC, it is slightly more work. In a processor, it is actually very straightforward. The data have to be processed with some adds and subtracts, and the outputs have to be processed with some adds and subtract to go back from a 4x4 four four to a 2x2. Two two. So basically, the 3x3 three three input have to be added and subtracted to transform it into a 4x4 four four input. Perform the MAC operation, then the 4x4 four four output is then transformed back to a 2x2 two two output. So basically, in the end of the day, these 2x2 two two pixels post-transformation should be mathematically identical to these four boxes that we have here. Is there a place where this doesn't work that you have to watch out for? So when does it work? When doesn't it work? Yeah. So the obvious places where it doesn't work is when each uh, uh, step of the filter has no overlap. For example, the filter a window size may be a one by one convolution and then it may not work. Or we may have a three by three with a stride of three, in which case the 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 data from one step to the next of the window have no overlap at all. Generally speaking, most of the window grad transformation in CNN networks is applied onto three by three convolutions with a stride of one, which is actually the vast majority of the compute requirement in most of the neural network models out there. But there's also some other places that it, it, it doesn't work from a numerical uh, precision perspective. If this is in floating point, then there's actually no problem. But, but, but you will see in window grad transformation, some of the intermediate results are um, about 2.25 times larger than what it once was. So you can view it as if you come in with an 8-bit integer precision, you actually have to go into a int 10.2, which means 12 bit to preserve the entire numerical accuracy. So on a lot of the 8 bit precision hardwares, when people are doing window grad transformation to accelerate the process, you really have to ask them, are you losing any dynamic range? Are you losing any quantization of precision? Or are you preserving the entire uh, dynamic range and precision through the window grad transformation. Because if it is not, then there can be a significant loss in the output precision. And that precision is a variable that you work with in AI all the time, right? Because Absolutely. now you want to know, okay, if we have enough cameras sitting on, the, on a particular subject, we don't need as much precision as we do if it's only one camera. The precision is something that is often dealt with in training, um, as well as quantization, which often requires retraining. For an inference hardware, which most of this Winograd is performed on inference hardware, you really have to ask the question, um, do we have to retrain our model for a particular inference hardware? Or does inference hardware guarantee that a trained model of a certain precision, say int 8, will maintain the numerical accuracy with or without the Winograd transformation? So that's a question that customers really have to ask their vendors, you know, are you doing Winograd transformation because it is attractive from power pers performance perspective, but are you giving up any accuracy or precision in that process? Do you see this being uh, working more in the data center or at the edge or both? We absolutely see this happening both. In, it, it is already happening in the data center, especially, uh, like I said, on floating uh, precision of arithmetic, there is almost no loss from doing the Winograd transformation. But on the edge, where you're so uh, power dominated, that, that, that is where most of the computation is done in integer mode. And that is also where this Winograd of a 2.25x benefit in performance can uh, give you big boost in power efficiency. So um, the precision is limited in the edge, and also power is limited in the edge. So we really have to combat this problem very carefully, especially for edge devices. If you set this up for a particular use, can you adjust it later on? Absolutely. So uh, in most of the hardware that we have seen, um, the window grad transformation is an option. 
it is not a hard requirement through a certain neural network layer. So we always have the option to use it or not use it in a particular hardware. Any range in terms of how much of an improvement you get if you get this right? Well, it is actually very attractive. So say 75% roughly of the CNN operations are on these three by three convolutions with a stride of one. And we can accelerate 36 max into 16 uh, Mac operations essentially. That's about two and a quarter times improvement on 75% of the layers. We can easily be talking, you know, 1.7x improvement in overall throughput and power efficiency, which is very attractive. When did this start really coming to light of we need this versus what we were doing in the past? I think it's been around for the past few years. Um, people realize, you know, like once you get the math right, this benefit comes virtually free, and it is a much easier way than try to brute force optimize the hardware. It's, it's going at it from a numerical computing and a mathematical uh, perspective to really uh, try to get better performance out of the same hardware by permuting the data in an internal way. Chen Wang, thanks for a great explanation.